Hello there. Today we are going to take a deeper dive at the deserted fairgrounds. Let's hop into it. First things first, how do we get there? So you're going to want to start off by going to the Haunted Woods. And there is a quick link button on there if you're on mobile or you can go to Deserted Fairgrounds right here in the back. There's a lot going on here. We got Castle Knox, Carnival Terror, Test Your Strength, Wheel of Misfortune, but we're mostly going to be looking at the games and scratch cards today. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. So the Haunted Fairgrounds came out in 2002. You'll notice we only had the Wheel of Misfortune plus a few shops. By 2003, however, we start seeing some games pop up like Test Your Strength and the Scratch Cards, but it wasn't until 2005 that we got the rest of the games with Bagatelle, Court Gun Gallery, Coconut Shy. So there's four carnival games in total, but we're also going to take a look at the Scratch Cards too. So to get a Scratch Card, you would go to the Scratch Card kiosk. I haven't bought one in a while. Let's take a look at what Jelly Neo has to say about it. Each Scratch Card costs 1,200 Neo points that takes there's a two hour wait limit with a max of five per day the reason we're calling out scratch cards is because you do have a chance to get scratch card sid as a battle dome challenger in addition to if you win a scratch card you get this avatar. I actually think Sunny Neo has a better breakdown of the cards and the, the prize pool potential for those cards. So let me get there. So looking at the different cards, there's a total of six. These are all the potential spots you can get. Nothing is going to harm your pet, but you do have some chances to either randomly gain a, a level, get a mutant plushie, a random spooky item, or some other just cool items from this. The jackpot would be winning all the money. There are a handful of interesting items in the prize pool like this Nemo finger has no price history for it so that might be some windfall money but also really difficult to get because that would be a level 8 random haunted weaponry prize. Some of these plushies also have a little bit of value. I think this mutant croc plushie was about 300k so you might get a, a good plushie that you could resell for cash or one you just want to keep because these are kind of cute to be honest. Snowballs all these don't really resell for much same with a lot of these foods but let's buy a scratch card see which want to get. We got the Crypt of Chance scratch card. This one is just a rarity 101, so no reason for me to hang on to it for now. So let's just go ahead and scratch it, see what happens. I don't really have a strategy with scratch cards. I just, I, I do what I can. <laughs> that, that's my strategy, just do what I can. Looking good with the bones. Maybe we'll get lucky. I don't know. And I busted. All right, well, that's the scratch cards. It works pretty, very similar to all the other scratch cards in the site, if that is something that is of interest to you. So on to the games. All of the games that you can play are generally considered rigged games. They're very, very difficult to win with intermediate potential for either payout or a prize. These are all the art, the old artwork for these games very fun. So one note before we get started, there is a way that I'm able to see, so these carnival games were not part of the ruffle integration into the Neopets flash games. These are kind of on a, a separate chunk of the site. So the native Neopets ruffle integration will not work to see or play these games. You do have a couple options. Option one is if you'd want to install the ruffle Chrome extension into your browser. I believe there's also one for Mozilla Firefox. This is what I have installed into my browser and that's how I'm able to see and play a lot of these games. The other option you have is for these games. So you've, if you notice on this Jelly Neo list, we got Bagatelli with special links, Coconut Shy with special links, Cork Gun Gallery with special links. You are able to, if you don't want to install any extra extensions into your browser or just want to make this quick and easy, there is a method where you can play these games without Flash and it'll just be a string URL that you'll refresh on until it tells you you can't play anymore. We're going to be playing these with Flash today, so I don't want want to click through to any well I guess I can do a one of Bagatelli so just be, so we can see how it looks so then you'll notice that you know my total NP was 16500 the success was this game must be rigged so I didn't get anything for this one but if I were to refresh you can see my money goes down prize doesn't change I get nothing from this one so that's two of my Bagatelli throws um, knocked out there let's start off by taking a look at Coconut Shy so not gonna lie Coconut Shy is my favorite carnival game it costs you a uh, 100 neo points per throw you get 20 throws per day so that's a total pay in of 2000 neo points to fully play this one every day um you just pick a coconut and throw this ball at it hope it knocks down or get gets hit 
in general, most of the time I find that I'm at least getting that 50 Neo point for touching the ball, or if you make it rock, you get 300 Neo points. So you, generally you're not fully losing that 2000 every day. So like that was a point where it got a little rocked, but didn't completely fall down, but I still got 300 Neo points back. So this, this is why I think Coconut Shy is one of those worth it ones, just because you do have a higher chance of getting some cash back and you're not just straight up throwing 2000 neo points into the fire the other benefit for playing coconut shy is that if you do manage to knock down a coconut not only will you get a really high value coconut that you can turn turn around and resell generally for like 600k all the way up to 1.5 million sometimes in neo points you also get an avatar the first time you knock down a coconut so if you're an avatar hunter i would definitely add this one to your list i continue playing this one just because i like that chance of getting a coconut and the pay in of about 2,000 Neo points every day doesn't fill my heart with terror <laughs> just because I do see some of that Neo points making it back. So looking at our throws, we started with 16,300. We ended up with 16,300, so we broke even. Didn't even lose any money with that round. Before we fully move on, let's just take one little quick peek at the Jelly Neo Guide. Um, here's that avatar chance right here, and here's all the coconuts you could potentially get. Pretty much all of these have really high value, or if you're a collector, you, you might want to start collecting these these all go into a stamp album this game is entirely luck there is no strategy you can use so that that'll be the same for all of these there really is no good strategy for any of these it is all just random chance and luck which is why some people are kind of lukewarm on which ones they play if they even play them at all just because they'd rather not have a guaranteed loss for some of these moving on to test your strength this one only costs 100 neo points to play you can play this every six hours so if you're min maxing you can do this up to four times a day this one has been converted to the new UI so you can play this one on your mobile device tablet or wherever and it's a pretty simple one to just click and go so useless is the most common you'll either get a little bit of spooky food or you'll get a little bit of NP back so that's another positive for test your strength the jelly neo team is actively still collecting data so if you want to help and contribute out to a fan site that you use and love all the time you can submit your prize results to jelly neo and I'm sure they'd really appreciate your data but this is another little just click and play you have all the way to potentially get this jackpot with Hubert Knox but there's a lot of other awesome touch points along the way most of these useless prizes are just going to be spooky foods i tend to hang on to them because sometimes these will end up in employment agency and while the payouts aren't that great generally it's still just a free round of employment agency so i tend to hold on to them weakling prizes is going to be just more of your standard foods clomatos those go for about 1k so you'll, you'll see some in here that kind of spike up a little bit in value but still no no windfall money is happening in this tier of food except maybe this what is this yeah so snorkel snout 12k you can that, that's a pretty good one i think that's tied to an avatar which is why that one's a bit expensive puny it start looking starts looking a little bit nicer you got an option for this mummified neg which would be nice but no points of the negary so this is still only a 3k item and your red slorg will net you only 5k because slorg's prices have tanked quite a bit then looking at our average prize pool we start seeing some interesting looking pet pets also some really rare merch it looks like but all the resale value on these seem very low let's check this pet pet 187k for a drulic would be nice or you could keep it because that's pretty cute cute little one. Drugal is only 11k. Oh, that's Ternali. Ternali's 4k. And then more chances for foods. I'm not seeing. Oh, Elderly Apple is 175k. Holy shit. Yeah, so a lot of interesting interesting items in here with varying degrees of is it going to get you any money or or whatnot a regular goople is 21k this intestine is only 4k <laughs> that's a fucked up pet pet jowlard 6k but the zomut 2 million so that would be nice to get a zomut so a pretty decent prize pool overall in my opinion it only costs 100 neo points to play so is this one worth it to me it is it, it's no skin off my back to play this one especially for i generally get neo points back or some food items which i don't mind holding on to there is no avatar with 
this one though. Next up is the Court Gun Gallery. So this one's kind of interesting because uh, people were telling me to play this one, but then looking at what we have for options. So it is 100 Neo points a shot um, and you have 20 shots total. So this is another total pay in of 2000 if you were to max this out every day. This is another one that is completely random. It, it makes no difference if you try to aim for the target or these items. There is that again, that link to play without flash, but these are all of of the prizes that you can get. At this point in time, all of these items are just deflating rapidly. So like this artificial banana stacks used to be, you know, 520K, which is wild, 400K, but now they're selling for about 13K. So those have recently rapidly dropped. Same with all these other foods, nothing in here is quietly a banger. They're all pretty cheap and have, have been losing value left and right. So let's give it a go, see how I do at Court Gun Gallery. This is gonna make me open it up in a new tab. And boop. Okay, and it's a little wonky doing this one with the Ruffle browser because I just see that I'm, I'm just losing money left and right. And then the undefined message is also kind of awkward and weird. And that's just thanks to the death of Flash, I guess. <laughs> Oh, okay, I actually got something. Um, it broke the game, cool. So let's go check my inventory. So we got Kiwi Pear Gummies. Let's check in on what those resell for. 200 Neo points, so really not worth it. I'm gonna try reloading this to see if I can still play because I don't think I've maxed out my rounds yet because I have tw up to 20 rounds I can do. I'm waiting for it to yell at me, hopefully. Okay, so I finally hit the no more shots today. Lost that 2,000 Neo points to play, but we did get one item. So is it worth it? To me, this one, not so much, because I don't want to just throw 2,000 Neo points away to get items that I can't really resell for any higher value. So that's why I choose not to play this one personally. But you know, if you like it, if you enjoy it, play it. Like not everyone enjoys Coconut Shy or Test Your Strength. So, you know, th these ones really do fall in the, if you enjoy doing it, do it. Um, but if you don't, you're not missing out on too terribly much. The last one we have is Bagatelle. This one is my least favorite one out of all of them. It takes 250 Neo points per round and you can try up to 20 times per day. So that's a total pay in of 5,000 Neo points. So your goal is to try to hit one of these slots so that you can hopefully either get the jackpot, a good payout or a random prize. Some of these prizes, a lot of these prizes are kind of in that crazy value, like 30K for a puzzle is insane. 2 million for a lunch box. So that might be another reason why people are willing to, to pay in 5K a day to potentially get one of these. These are the prizes available for slots 12 through 15. And then the big jackpot would be an insane amount of Neo points. So that could be good too. So this one feels more solidly in the, it feels like you're gambling every day camp. Coconut Shy doesn't feel like gambling to me. It, it truly feels like a carnival game. This feels like, you know, you're, you're betting with 5K Neo points just to see how you do. So speaking of seeing how we do, let's see how we do with Bagatelle today. So this is another one that's gonna open up in a new tab and we will just uh, see how it goes. So you just click or the board. Okay, click the board and he'll throw it up. Most of the time you're gonna be landing on one and two. Oh, I got a two. Got five Neo points for that. Landed on five, so we got a thousand Neo points for that. Two, which is five Neo points. One is nothing. Four is 250 Neo points. Okay, so maybe the pay in pay out isn't as, as harsh as I thought. I just would always land on ones and that's it. Five is a thousand Neo points, okay. I thought he threw it off screen for a second. <laughs> All right, so I've capped out my throws. I started with 14,200, ended with 12, 
100. So only lost about, you know, 2000 or so Neo points. So is it worth it? I'm still on the fence about this one, but I'm starting to warm up and see why people do play this one every day. That this is one that has been recommended for me to play also. That this one's going to be a personal call if, if, if you're okay with lighting 5k on fire every day. That starts to push into my bracket of like that chunk of change I'm not exactly okay with losing, especially while I'm still building wealth. If maybe I get to hit some of my Neopoint savings goals, would I open up to do this one every day? Because we do get a lot of free money from the daily quest log. Like, let's be real, that's a bunch of free money that we can be doing stuff with. So I might incorporate this one more later on after I hit some benchmarks in my Neopoint savings goals. But for now, this will be a do it every now and again for me personally. So that, that's my quick and dirty on are the Deserted Fairground games worth it or not? Let me know which one is your favorite or if you avoid these altogether. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me and I will catch you next time. Bye.